welcome back. The question is, what's your fragrance? And we have the etiquette lady in the house, Janet Adetu. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. The table is full of fragrances. <laughs> yes, lots of fragrance. So what's your yeah. flavor? Oh, <laughs> nice, mature, sweet. <laughs> yes, fragrance etiquette. It's really important. It's part of what I would say your grooming routine. Why? Because that's the area where you get rid of the sensitive body odor. And it's really important because it's the finishing touch to whatever you've decided to wear that day. And at the end of the day, it's because you want to feel or smell fresh. You know, it gives you an air of confidence and assertiveness. So really, what's your signature fragrance, you know? And I say this because... Um, Many a times, too much perfume is overpowering. Too little perfume is overwhelming. So you can imagine when somebody doesn't wear, it's like, oh, what's that smell? You know, it's overwhelming. Oh <laughs> it can be well overwhelming. <laughs> but having said, <laughs> having said that, though, with fragrances, there are, people react to them in different ways. So some fragrances are sweet and sensual, but some actually give some people some kind of sickening reaction mm -hmm. so if it's too much you begin to feel dizzy yeah. and you find that there are some policies in some organizations regarding the use of perfume having said that we're talking about perfume there are some places where you shouldn't wear or you should moder moderate the use of it for instance you're going for an interview you don't want to wear too much perfume at that kind of environment because it's not about the smell. It's all about you. Just so it? when yes. you enter the room you, and everyone yes, is looking you're like, going oh, to. I got help you. It's not a type. Yes, like your examiner life. No. So, you're like, so you don't want to distract attention from you because of your smell. Again, in the places of worship like church, you don't want to wear too much mm. that people around you are like, mm, what's that smell? Mm. What about the hospital? There are some smells that you really can't take into the hospital because sick people or people who are you know, convalescent, they can react to those kind of smells. Mm. And again, I talk about some offices or some meetings or some conferences, they actually stipulate the use of perfumes because when you're in a crowd where we're in a place where there's a lot of people, people complain about different smells, you know. Mm. So and you have the, to be careful. What's the um, acceptable for every occasion kind of fragrance? Well, you know, th this is it. Fragrances come in different ways. So you can have one that is a floral smell, just mm -hmm. using one flower, mm -hmm. or a bouquet of, fl of flowers. Mm -hmm. So a group of flowers mixed together. Mm -hmm. You can have something that's fruity or citrus, something that is woody or spicy. You know, it depends on your, I mean, what's your, like I said, what's your fragrance? What's mm. your signature smell? Mm. So in, personally, I don't like sweet, fruity smells. My daughter, one of my daughters loves that kind of smell. It doesn't really work for my personality. I like mature smells and smells that are longer lasting, you know. So because it depends on you as an individual. You have to remember that body odor is different for, for, for everybody. And the perfumes also sit differently on yes, different because body odors. Your body odor is affected by the amount of heat that you generate from your own chemical and biological makeup. It's affected by um, the weather, the climate, how much you expose yourself to heat. It's even affected by your health, your diet. You know, maybe you're on medication, maybe you're even stressed. Lots of things, your hormones, for instance, all these things are affected actually affect the kind of body odor that you bring out mm -hmm. and everyone is definitely different um i always say that wear the one that makes you feel comfortable not the one that makes you start scratching your nose the one that makes you everybody has trial and error times then you're going to find that very perfume that you like a lot and you will use it now when i do my trainings i ask people what's your signature smell and I get some people telling me, well, I don't have a signature smell because I use three, four perfumes at the same time. And then I ask why. And they say, well, because I don't want people to know what I'm using. The truth of the matter is that no matter how you wear perfume, um, it's going to smell different. I went to um, a meeting one day and a gentleman said to me, Madam, I like your puff. Okay. I didn't even understand what he was oh. saying initially. I said, puff, what's puff? Then I realized, okay, it's this perfume. But, you know, because... When we wear perfume in the morning, we actually don't smell it anymore. Yeah. But when you pass someone, they actually smell it. Mm -hmm. So it depends. And then that means you're comfortable in that smell. If you keep smelling it, then it's irritating. Mm -hmm. That smell becomes irritating to you. But you want to choose that one that makes you feel comfortable. I have to say there are notes when you're wearing perfume. Top note, 
is the perfume that you smell within, or this fragrance that you smell rather, within 10 minutes. So that's the okay. first original smell. When you walk into a perfumery and you spray something on you, that's the top note. That's 10 minutes. And then the, the middle note actually is when you have worn it for about an hour. That begins to give you the real smell mm -hmm. of the perfume. But the base note is when you've worn it literally for about three, four hours. That's the real smell. And that means it has actually had time to interact with your body chemicals. That's the real smell. And that's exactly how it is with individuals. So you wear perfume. You don't know when they wore it. It could be hours ago. You smell it on them and you like it. And you actually ask them, well, I like your perfume. What are you wearing? And then they tell you, you buy it. It is definitely going to smell totally different on you because of all the things I mentioned mm. earlier regarding mm. how you react to, to perfume. Okay, so if I have to... Um, for instance, ch change my perfume now, and mm. there's this array. Oh, <laughs> so, yeah. what should I have in mind? Good, in um, very good. Um, I love perfumes. I mean, I collect perfumes, and I always choose what perfume I want to wear depending on if there's a policy, Location. if it's been mentioned in guidelines of where I'm going, um, depending on the time of the day. And depending on the occasion, where am I going? What am I going to do that day? Normally, I'd like to wear a very subtle smell in the daytime, so it's not overpowering. But in the evening, I'll wear something stronger because in the evening, you know, there's more heat generated from, from, from you know, I would say natural heat. You know, we protect ourselves in the evening from air conditioning. So there's no natural heat. So you can get sweaty if the air conditioning of that air environment is not enough. So you're going to generate more heat. You want something a bit more stronger, a bit more powerful. So you choose your perfumes according to the day, the event, where you're going. Is there any policy? Are you going to be exposed to outside heat? So perfumes come in different ranges depending on the alcohol content. So for women, the most powerful perfume that you can wear is oud. Very expensive, but a little drop like this can last you even till the next day. So have you found yourself in a situation whereby you hug somebody and they smell on you or mm. their smell rubs off on mm -hmm. you? They're wearing a perfume that has a high content mm -hmm. of alcohol. So from oud goes to perfume. But what you see most people buying is eau de perfume, which lasts a long time. And then you now step down to eau de, de toilette. toilette. So that actually is the one that within a couple of hours, um, it doesn't last much longer because mm. the alcohol content is very low. And the moment, and it's a summer fragrance. It's used to smell just sweet because it's summertime. And the heat usually wears that off very quickly. If you go down to men's perfumes, actually there starts with aftershave, which has the most alcohol content. Then it moves to eau fraiche, eau de fraiche and then cologne. Cologne is a more subtle musk smell for men. Now, is there any truth in the fact that um, when you wear perfume, if you can smell it yourself, then you're overwhelming everybody else? There someone is a lot once, of truth. Well, someone once said, Pe others are supposed to smell your perfume, not you. Yeah, yeah. But having said that, though, perfumes do wear out gradually as you get along the day but definitely if you've worn one that has a high content of alcohol it's going to last a long time and everywhere you go the smell you is going to follow you after. yes so you walk into a room and you can actually tell that somebody has been there because you've recognized that smell on them you know um yes that can be a little bit overpowering you know but if the smell is not offensive and it doesn't make you feel dizzy, then it's not too bad. It's when that smell makes you feel very dizzy. That's when you have a problem. Um, I'd say perfumes, good perfumes, actually are pretty expensive. We all know, you know, and so you have to be careful. And when you're choosing that perfume, because we have senses and we're human beings, you really can't smell more than three or four at a time. So if you walk into a perfumery and you're still smelling the sixth one, you really can't smell it anymore your senses have tuned off. So after three, maximum four, sniff a jar of coffee beans to clear your senses, yes. Because you keep smelling and you're like, mm, I can't remember, how did that one smell? Mm. All the smells have mixed up because you've blocked your senses. So you, there's always, a good perfumery would have coffee beans 
all over the place. So you sniff the coffee beans, it clears your senses, and then you can start Begin again. again. Yes, you can start again. <laughs> but does perfume expire? Yes. There are some that will last six months, some that will last as long as five years. All right? And some people say, but how do I know if my perfume has expired? Well, where do you keep your perfumes? Where do you keep them? At on the home. dressing table. On the dressing table. Fine, that's not bad. Having said that, though, it's important that it's a cool place, a dry place, it's cool. it's and dry. there's no sunlight on them. Mm -hmm. The enemy of fragrances, of perfumes, is sunlight and air. So you're going to quickly kill off your perfumes if direct heat is on them or if they're exposed. So you can see this by smelling them. The smell starts wearing off. You can see this by discoloration. So you can see this is the color of the perfume now in that bottle. If it starts turning darker, then it's actually expiring. Yes, it's actually expiring. <laughs> That's the truth. And sometimes if you check the back of the packet and you look at the ingredients, anything that says um, natural ingredients, is definitely not going to have a long oh, shelf life. Okay, okay. Mm. We, we'll go on a break, and when we come back, I have a question concerning children and perfumes. Okay. So, yeah. just stay with us. Mm -hmm.